Howdy friends. I have a story I want to share with you today about the Indians and wild rice. And I found it in a, in a child's book called Fats and Fancies. And it had the story, while it's written uh, that a child would understand it, I think it's also very interesting for an adult. I found it interesting anyways. And even though I'm an adult and people don't, people say I don't act, uh, often act like one, this is good for adults or young people. So let's get into this. The preamble to it is, you have all eaten rice many times, no doubt, but have you ever eaten wild rice? It used to be one of the favorite foods of the Indians and many Indians still gather wild rice in the fall. Let's read this story to find out how. The Indians gathered wild rice long before the white man came to this country and many Indians gathered, gather wild rice today still. This is the way it was done many, many years ago. Wild, wild rice grows in lake water. The Indians would find a good place to set up their tents or teepees near the banks of the lake, uh, where the waving stalks of green were to be seen. And while the wild rice ripened, the Indians were busy. The boys fished in the lake. Some of the Indian girls picked out wild raspberries and blueberries, and they dried these berries in the sun, preserving them for later use. Now, each day the girls would go out to see if the rice was ripe uh, enough to be gathered. So when the wild rice was nearly ripe, all the Indians had a great big feast and the women had, and uh, girls went out in the canoes and they paddled slowly along through the waving rice. And the Indian squaw would take a handful of the rice stalks and tie them together near the top where the rice grains grew. And uh, this was necessary because the grains of rice fall out very easily when they are ripe. It, if the stalks were tied into bundles, the wind could not shake the rice grains into the water. Pretty smart. After the rice was tied, the Indian women watched it carefully. And just before it was ripe enough to fall, all the women and girls went out again in their canoes, and they did not shake the rice any more than they could help. An Indian woman would hold the rice over the edge of the canoe with one hand, and with the other hand, she would hit it with a... Uh, with the stalks, the, she would hit the stalks with a stick and the rice grains would fall pattering like rain into the canoe. And when the canoes were loaded with rice, the women and girls paddled it to shore. Clean, uh, clean deer skin were spread out in the sun and each canoe was carried up from the lake shore and the rice was emptied onto those skins. There it dried and, fr and finished ripening in the sun. Now, if you lived in the country, you have seen the great threshing machines with crews of men that run them. And when they thresh the wheat, they do not only separate it from the straw, but also from the outer coating or hull that covers each kernel of grain. And when the Indian women uh, struck the, the heads of rice and separated the grain from the straw, they did the first part of the threshing. And uh, this is what you think of when you hear the, the word threshing. But the grain of rice still had on them little husks or hull. And removing this hull was what the Indians called threshing. And how did they do that, though? They didn't have great machines to do it with. All the Indians met in a large open place in front of the teepees. Slow fires were built upon the ground, and then the deer skins full of wild rice were fastened above the fires. The rice had to be heated so that the husks would indeed come off easily. The boys who were there to uh, thresh the rice went down to the lake and they washed their feet thoroughly. Then they put on new moccasins. Hot rice was poured into the holes uh, with a short, with a shout, each boy jumped into a hole and how their feet flew in the hot rice. Each Indian lad stamped his feet to break the outer coverings of the ground of the grains of rice and each tried to do it faster than the other boys could do it. The Indian women watched very carefully. They wanted the threshing done well. And when the rice in, in a hole was threshed, it was taken out and the Indian women filled the hole again with more hot rice. The Indians put part of the rice into bags made of the skins of animals. And these they could easily carry from the rice fields. In the winter, when wild game was scarce, they could use the rice for food and a delicious food it was too. The Indians looked carefully to find good places to store rice. A hole was dug and then lined with dried grass. The grass kept the rice dry and clean, and the Indians put the rice into the hole and then they covered it. No one but themselves could find the place. Sometimes they built fires over the hole and then scattered the ashes. Next, they looked for any marks 
of their moccasins. And then these were covered carefully with dry leaves. And that's how the Indians gathered, gathered their rice. And it's how the Indians processed the rice. They were very ingenious people that worked with uh, the meager things they had to work with around them. The stones, sticks, that they fa stones that they fashioned into wonderful artifacts that I've showed you many of, many of on my channel. So I hope you enjoyed this story of wild rice gathering with the Native American Indians. God bless you all. It's great to be here with you. It is such a beautiful, beautiful late spring day. And uh, yeah, God bless you. See you again real, real soon. Hasta la vista, baby.